I'm John Hayashi, Managing Director of Tax at BPM. If you're like my client base, usually when I get calls wanting to talk about the San Francisco payroll and gross receipts tax, it usually evolves into a focus on three areas. Is my business subject to tax? How much is the tax? How do I plan so I can minimize the tax? Before the summer of 2018, you would determine whether you had a San Francisco business tax filing obligation if you had a physical presence in the city. Physical presence usually being established by office locations in the city, employees in the city, or inventory being stored in the city that usually establish the physical presence. Any one of those three, you would have a filing obligation in our city. After the summer of 2018 and the Wayfair case, the Supreme Court said that in addition to physical presence, it is now constitutional for cities and states to establish what's called an economic nexus threshold, that when exceeded, a taxpayer would also have a filing obligation and a tax reporting obligations, the same as if they had physical presence in the state or locality. So now you need to know if you have enough San Francisco gross receipts to exceed the city's economic nexus threshold of 500,000, which would establish a filing obligation. Once you determine that you do have economic nexus or physical presence in San Francisco, then we shift to the discussion of how do we compute the tax? And it really does depend on the business that you're in. For some businesses, it'll be easy to determine your business because your business operations are wholly confined within the city, San Francisco city limits, and you do not have any other presence or business operations outside the city. But for some businesses that have a multi-state operation, it can be complex because it's not like federal and state income taxes. And instead, it depends on the computation of tax established by the city. For those of you who may, may not know, San Francisco Treasurer collects 180 taxes and fees under the San Francisco ordinances. So the gross receipts tax computation depends on the business activity which you're in. The city has eight major classifications, like retail, professional services, construction. And so you have to know what business activity your business falls in. Recently, I've had questions from a client saying, well, John, I do a, a multiple of business operations in San Francisco, have different revenue streams. So how do I know what business activity you're in? And there again, it, it depends. And it really does depend on the facts and circumstances of your business. In addition to the major classifications, there's also a special gross receipts tax on commercial receipts and a special classification for large businesses that are subject to the homelessness gross receipts tax. So in addition to knowing the eight major, made eight major classifications, you have to determine whether your business generates commercial receipts and also big enough to know if you're subject to the homelessness gross receipts tax. Okay. In addition to the eight classifications and those two special classifications, there's also the small business exemption. So if your business activity is such that you qualify for San Francisco's small business exemption, you would be totally exempt from both the payroll and the gross receipts taxes. Currently for 2020, the small business exemption is 1.1 million, but for those of you who kept up on the election results in November, that exemption level is now gonna go up to 2 million starting 1-1-21. The complexity continues for businesses that have multi-state business operations, or multiple county information if they're wholly within California. In that case, you then, then have to determine what receipts are attributable to San Francisco because San Francisco's gross receipts tax only applies to those receipts generated by your business in San Francisco. Again, refer back to your business activity because the apportionment or allocation methodology to determine how your San Francisco tax receipts should be computed is based on your business activity. For example, in the retail area, your apportionment is based on 50% payroll and 50% location. If you're in the real estate business activity, for the most part, your business gross receipts are going to be sourced to the location of your real estate property. For payroll tax purposes, you usually have to pay San Francisco payroll tax on your San Francisco payroll. The one issue that I've seen come up on, on audits is the situation with flow through entities like partnerships, S corps, and LLCs who have members who are working for the LLC, S corp, 
or partnership. And the issue there becomes, well, how much of your business profits really are payroll because you're working in the business and it's not all profits in the eyes of San Francisco. Some of that amount getting paid is for services and therefore payroll for purposes of our payroll tax. So that's an issue that if you're an S Corp LLC partnership and actively involved in your business, you may have to determine how much of your gross profits are actually payroll for San Francisco city purposes. How do you minimize your tax? Well, I think the simple answer is to contact your trusted tax advisor on what you can do because he or she will know your business operations uh, and can help you maneuver through the complexity of the San Francisco gross receipts and payroll tax system. And in today's world, with people working in remote locations, before it would be easy because you would say, okay, I've got workers working in the financial district. But nowadays, many employees are now working in their home in Marin or home in Lost South Lake Tahoe and no longer working in San Francisco. In which case, that is no longer San Francisco payroll and not subject to the payroll tax because it's, it's not for services performed. If you have any additional questions, please contact me, John Hayashi, BPM. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tax content.